Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video M2A530 I will be showing you how to set up advanced shading networks using this org model. This was kindly sponsored by Eduardo from Chile. He's a very dedicated and professional modeling and sculpting artist and I will show you um, his ArtStation account right now. And you can see he's got lots of different models. He's got like Game of Thrones characters in here, pretty cool sculpts. And he was kind enough to provide me the, his orc model with all the textures involved. And I can show you guys how to set up the shading networks, how to plug everything together and how to make a nice lighting scene. And right here you can see this was my result from the render. Um, it's more stylized lighting, so it's not um, as realistic as um, as his renders. So I just wanted to show off some lighting te techniques. Here's another close-up. So this is kind of uh, what we'll be creating in this tutorial. And I just thought I'd just show you some references, I think, where he got inspired from the modeling and all the texturing and all, everything like that. So this is obviously from the Warcraft movie. Um, beautiful sculpts, beautiful models right here. So um, we will trying to mimic some of these lighting setups and yeah I'm, I'm trying to get the shader as close as possible but we have some limitations in terms of quality of the maps itself but we are still we still have something very beautiful to look at and we can get something very close to uh, to this I guess and in this video I will be trying something different um, I will try to split up in, in more like 20 minute chunks it's easier to digest than one long one hour video. So I'll, I'll just, I might upload them more frequently now. So um, just that you guys keep uh, watching and be able to see the content, not miss parts out of or something like that. And before we jump into this, obviously some uh, little plugging here from my account. So this is my Instagram account where I publish quite a few or share some images from Vancouver and also my CG stuff. Um, you can find me um, with my full name here and uh, check that out if you want to do so. And obviously on my YouTube channel, I would highly appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and obviously also like um, the video if you like the content I am producing. And um, the source files for this video will be made available on my Patreon account. Um, where you will have access to all my source files from all my previous tutorials. It's the, there's like a tier down here to get the source files um, down here. If you, if you su um, support me here, you will get access to all these different assets here. Um, and also, before I forget the most important part, before um, uh, Eduardo actually made, it, made the model and textures available for free for everyone to use. So they will... Um, be made available in the description below you will find a bitly link to the download files and you can actually access the full model and the textures and you can recreate this so feel free to check that out but if you want to get the final lit and shaded version you will find that on my patreon account right i hope that makes sense so yeah, if you like what I'm doing, if you uh, support all my work and all that, I would highly appreciate a like and a subscribe. And obviously, uh, if you want to be even more involved, uh, support me on Patreon. I would highly appreciate that. All right, so now let's just hit this shortcut. Oh, I um, I was asked what this uh, reference viewer is called it's called pure ref it's just an empty canvas you can drop your links from the internet here and you can um yeah look at your renders double click and it's it's a pretty nice way of uh, browsing or share, um, viewing your references all right so i just moved that out of the way and if you downloaded the file from the description below you would get a similar structure to this where you have your xgen files um the scene file is the or clean one and then all the textures are in here. So this is what you would be able to get if you would download the scene file. And if you start, if you are um, supporting me on Patreon, you will get this Maya file as well, where I already um, created or imported all the textures and assigned it to shaders. So we do not need to do that into in the tutorial. Um, it's just a bit easier to get started. And this will be uh saved as m2a orc uh, start and then you get this clean scene and then the finished one will be the one we will be creating now in this tutorial so um 
I think this is all I had to say for now. And obviously we will be starting now, I think with the main features, which will be the head. And then we will be, we'll, we will progress into more uh, minor things like the eyes and all that. So we start with the big shader and then we slowly um, go into the more finer ones. All right, so looking at the hypershade, I'll just rename this tab here to all, and then I will just be creating the head one right here and call this guy head and I will go to my all shader and I will just bring in um, let's say I think it's called body actually not all let's see select objects yeah so I will just bring the body over here and frame all like that so now I have just as the body isolated and I have the the diffuse shader pl or texture plugged in already everything is in linear color space so that that just that there is no confusion so just keep that in mind and these chunks are sorted by import groups what that means is this is our blood here are all our diffuses here are um, I think dirt layer all that stuff so um, let's just see what we get if we go to the head or body one and I'll just start rendering and we'll see what we get right here all right so I'm running right now with the GPU. So we will see how far we can get this working and maybe we will finish on the GPU till the end, but we'll see. So let's see if I, everything works. Yeah, everything is interactive right here. So um, this is our diffuse color. So let's just make sure that this is on one and we will be creating a scatter shader. So keep that in mind that we will not be using the base color, just a single diffuse component for long, but we will be uh, using it for now just to set everything up. So we have a few textures. Obviously you don't know what we have, but I know. So we've got the blood and we've got dirt and all of these I want to add. So I want to add the blood and the dirt. Let's see if both are selected. Yeah. And then we have, um, I think this is displacement. So let's just uh, select displacement. Then we have our eye, which we do not care right now. Not sure right now what this was. Sheen, we need sheen is kind of, you call it this sheen, but it's, I think it's kind of a wet map. And then I'm not sure what the one is at the bottom, but let's just bring the ones in. Oh, that's a specular one. And let's see what this one was. Uh, oh, that's the normal one. And mask is for the eye, okay. So these maps, I will just um, plus them in here so I have um, them in here to use and to show you how they look like. All right, so this is typically how I set it up. And these are all UDIM textures. So um, there are definitely more files on disk than, than these here. So let's just hook up the blood and see what that looks like. Let's see if I can isolate that. So you can see there's some blood on his cheeks and here and there. So that this is how that looks. Then we have the dirt. Let's just hook this one up to the ID slot. Dirt has like these things. Then this would be the displacement, which we don't need to look at. The specular is kind of pretty much a, um, intensities of specular components like that. We will just use that as a specular intensity. And then we have a normal map and then we have this wet map, which would, which should be around the lips and all that. All right. So let's see if that is the case. So loading the texture. And that one looks like this, right? So you can see it's wherever he should be more shiny. So these are the, the maps I have and I will use them now. So the first thing what I will do is I will use the dirt. Oh, what is hidden here? I will use the dirt, the blood and the diffuse and mix them somehow together just to create a more interesting um, like diffuse color. So what I will do, I will use the blood first. It's it's a red, like white on red. So I will need to create a mask for this. So what I will do is I will use an AI range um, shader, plug that in here and then I will just use the red component as a mask. Um, for my diffuse color. I hope I, I hope that makes sense, but I will show this to you in a bit. And then I will do the same for the dirt. This will kind of be also a, um, a mix as well. So I will kind of do the same thing. I'll just like to use a range just that I can isolate the colors more easily. So these two are my masks, which I will be creating 
for um, a <clears throat> a um, AI RGB float, I think, or no, um, or layer, f or yeah, this guy. And this one now will actually connect into um, the body. So if I connect the out color to my base, we should see um, almost nothing because it's a black color and it's stacked from from the so layer one is the topmost layer so layer eight will be at the bottom so what i like to do i like to start with layer eight and then i'll just stack stuff on top so my base would go into uh, my diffuse color would go into the input of um, number eight slot eight and then the next thing would be i will stack let's say i want to put the blood on top i will just put um i'll en enable layer seven which is now fully on top and I will drive that with a mask which is um, coming from the AI range right here. So if I show all now, let's see we have all these things and we want to actually mask um, mix number seven. So I'll just do that right there and we should hopefully see that the blood is now right in here. And you can see that is working as expected. It's just inverted. So what I need to do is just flip my outputs for um, the blood layer right here so I will just invert those and then we should see something happening right there so this is now adding the blood on top and then it's mixed in with this black color and obviously we would need to adjust the range to make it um, a bit more um, isolated in that region so it's not fading in it's actually very sharp so let's just try to reduce these inputs here and see what we can get. You can see now the stronger or the larger I make the input min, the more defined these outlines will be. And then we just need to tweak the colors. So right now this is fully black and we want something more bloody, something like, like red or like very dark red, right? So I think orc blood is also red, something like this. And you can see, I think the diffuse color is way too bright. So we will need to be adjusting that as well. So, but before we do that, let's just hook up the mix and we do it the same way um, we did the the blood. I'll just hiding this node here just to, to get rid of all the wires. Let's move this to get some more room here. And then this is the dirt one. And we want just to do the same thing. So I will just use the red channel again for mix number six. So now if I look at the head here, we should soon see something once I enable layer six. So that is enabled and you can see it's also inverted. So we just need to flip ma uh, flip the, the map around again just by in inverting those values. Now you can see that there's something going on in his forehead. And obviously the same thing as before, we just need to adjust our values and depends how strong we want to do it, we can create dirt. So this is now our dirt overlay and this might be a bit too strong maybe so we can go maybe to 0 0.65 maybe 0 0.7 and this is currently all running on the gpu so you can see it's super fast to work with super fun and then obviously in the mix we can just plug in any color we like like yellow or we can actually do something more appropriate so i will set that up right now with a noise all right, so let's create a noise. Uh, I always use, or mostly use the AI noise. It's it's pretty sophisticated, but basic. So it's good to work with that. So we want to plug that into input six. Was that correct? Uh, let's see. And then we can directly see the noise right there. And then obviously we want to play with some color. So let's just use isolate select to just see what the noise looks like increase the octaves to add more detail to the map itself and then play around with the, m the dirt colors. So let's just use that yellow we just had, maybe desaturate that, make it a bit darker. And then we use the same color again and maybe we just make it more desaturated and a bit lighter. And the yellow might go into more into a brown color, something like that maybe. This one as well, a bit browner. Depends what you want to do. It's all up to you, I guess. So you can increase the frequency so we get more mud, maybe five. Some breakup like that might work. And again, if I remove isolate selected, you can see now 
that this pattern is only in those regions. All right, and this is now the the dirt and I think the blood should go on top actually. So what you can do now, just sw switch out the masks we have right here. So the bottom one should go to mix seven and this one should go to mix six. And then we just need to swap out the colors as well. So this noise color should go to input seven and then our blood color, which we just chose, should go to input number six. And now the blood is on top. And obviously you can also name them properly in here, just that everything is nice and clear. So now the blood is on top and we need to maybe color correct, um, color correct the original diffuse color. I'm just hitting keyboard one, two, and three to collapse those nodes color correct i'm using the ai color correct it's a native one shipping with arnold and then i hook up here after the correct the input number eight and then i can just um, mess around with the color so i think in general this is a bit too bright too much um, value in this color for the base so i just want to make it a bit darker so um, let's just use the multiply to just darken this whole thing a bit down. So it's a bit more crunchy, I guess. And then the the, the dirt, we will mix uh, w work on the dirt in a bit once we get all the displacements working. And this brings us to the displacement for now. And you can see I'm starting off super basic and then I'll just bring slowly more and more detail to everything. So the top section here is our this uh, diffuse and I think this one was a displacement. Yeah, so this is the displacement one and we will be just hooking this one up right now. So what I need to do is create a displacement shader, delete the shading engine for that, hook up the red or just any RGB value. It's just the luminance typically or all the time actually displacement maps are black and white so it doesn't matter which of those RGBs you connect. So let me just uh, stop the render for an instant and just hook up the displacement. Um, more often than not, the, not uh, the scene crashes for me if I do that in a live IPR session. And so I, I'm just used to it now to just actually stop the render and then just restart it. So this is now with just a displacement map plugged in, nothing else done to this. So let's just switch to the um, basic mode which you can find under toolbar icons and then show debug shading icon which brings in this drop down menu and you can see now that we have this displacement um, being applied to our orc and typically Z, uh, displacement maps are from ZBrush so they start they are the zero values um, the scale at zero value is supposed to be zero so which it is so that's totally fine on default and this is now the auto bump on and off. It's a super high subdivision. So uh, we should have a lot of detail in here. I'm not even sure if this is on. So right now this is off. So um, it's not. It's just using the, the texture detail to, to displace it. So it's just pretty much a bump map, but it's good for now. We don't need the super high displaced geometry unless you really need it. So let's just work with that for now. And switching back to the shaded mode, you can already see that we get now a lot of detail, a lot of breakup everywhere, which is uh, a lot nicer than what we had before. So now comes a part of fine tuning this. So we can actually um, play around with the roughness, which is obviously something we need to do because he's not that sweaty overall. So let's just uh, bring up the specular roughness of this guy, maybe 0.45 and see how that looks. This looks already way more organic and it's it's it has some spec it's a bit dry but i think uh, this will work pretty well we we can try to maybe go 2.4 we don't need to spend that much time on this because we will um now a um, adjust the roughness based on our little maps here so we will be using the sheen which i showed you before it's like a black and white map and we can isolate that quickly looks like that and we just want to use these this map and maybe remap this as well with a range. 
and then use this in a, um, in a as a mask again for a color correct node. So I'm using an AI color correct node and I will just input my default specular roughness value, which we just define as uh, being, um, I think 0.4 we said. So this is my, my baseline and then the output of the mask as the output of the range goes into the mask of the color correct. And then we just choose a luminance value. Let's choose the red channel again and plug that into specular roughness. If I view this texture now, you can see that this is my base color. And then we have the range um, plugging into the mask. So if I now um, adjust the multiply, we can actually only adjust those regions driven by the map. So Wherever we we uh, we have the black now, his he will be more shiny, more specky, and obviously we we said we want to adjust the rain the map here. So these values here are currently on 0.7, and we want them to be more like um, white, uh, like 0.8 or something, 0.9. Let's just do that by reducing the input max to maybe 8.5. So these values should be now. Not sure if it's actually if it did update it properly. It's it looks like they did, but the map in the bottom doesn't seem to do it accordingly. Let's just check the range. You can see now it's it's very black here. So this is actually doing what it's supposed to. So we are, I'm happy with that. So let's see how it looks. You can see now his lips are looking super wet while the rest is still dry. And even here on the on on the eye ridges here you can see that it is uh, nice and moist. We can actually push this a bit further just by adjusting our little range sliders here. Oops, that was too much. Maybe like that. So this might be a bit extreme, but let's just see how that looks. On this area here, it works well. Let's check the mouth again. Yeah, it might be a bit much now, Let's maybe go a bit up again. So this is now what shading is, what look dev is, right? It's fine tuning this guy here. And currently we have a super flat lighting, it's front lit. That's why um, it it doesn't look as, a, as pleasing just because it's super front lit. But this is typically the way you do look dev in these kind of setups. Just everything is neutral and you can just focus on the textures. All right, so this was the specular component. Um, we still have a normal map to plug in, which I'll just do using an AI normal map. And these maps are all generated um, from Eduardo, so this is not me doing this. So I'll just plug this in as my default input to the normal camera. So now we should have a bump map applied to this as well. All right, we just had a little GPU crash. So I just uh, restarted um, the session and now I just switched to the CPU so we can keep going. So I have the normal map connected now and you can see all my, um, or most of the detail or the spec is gone now just because the map I feel is a bit too strong. So this is on zero. We can see we get some color back and some sheen and everything. So we definitely want to retain that. So I'll just uh, dial this in very subtle not too strong, just uh, to add a bit more breakup on him. And then for now, I think we are good with uh, the diffuse or the, the head part. Let's see if we're missing anything. Um, what was this here? Oh, the specular. Yeah, we I almost forgot that. So I just want to use this map with a range again um, to drive the specular intensity. Typically, I do not use those maps because I always, my conception is that everything is um, specular it just depends how rough the base surface is and objects cannot be not shiny right that's pretty much my philosophy but let's just plug this in because we have it and I'll just plug this in into the specular slot and uh, let's see what this map looks like it's this guy here so what I want to do um, just give this a bit more range i guess so i want to make sure that the whites are fully white that we're not losing any detail uh, which is important that we do not have any values uh, below one where it's white so i just clamp it pretty much to 8.5 so i know that all these values are one and only these ridges are um, less so we can clamp this a bit as well Point two. So now these parts get darker, which adds more ridges to everything. And we can clearly see this on the lips. If I go back to the shaded version that 
if this is on zero, um, it's the breakup is not as strong. And if it's maybe on point four, you can see that lots of the specular component is reduced in these ridges, which is what we want, but not as extreme. So let's check the map again. If I do isolate on that, so yeah, this is pretty good. So now I think we have all the maps hooked up for the head and we will, we can definitely refine this some more. And I think um, the dirt looks a bit like mold. So what I want to do on this, um, I just want to maybe change the specularity. And I think I want to change the specularity overall a bit in terms of roughness. So let's just uh, go back to the specular roughness setup, which is right here. And I just want to lower my overall shininess like that. So he's a bit more sweaty, um, which might work a bit better. And then what I want to do on the dirt sections, I just want to change the roughness on these guys. So it's kind of, again, the same idea. So we just need to find our dirt maps, um, which were all the way on the top, I think. So let's see where they are. Uh, let's see if this is the dirt one. Yeah, so this is our dirt map. And I just want to use that pretty much to drive the roughness as well. So that's the blood, that's the dirt. So I can ju actually just use this directly. Maybe not as like, intense. So it might be just a bit too much to, to drive the roughness of that. So I just create one more range node here and hook up these two maps here. And then I go down to my roughness slot, create another color correct. I like doing that. It's super clean to work like this. So I just hook these guys up again like that. And then the out goes into the mask and then the result of the new color correct goes into the specular roughness again. And then let's see what the range looks like. Uh, we need to invert this again. So just go uh, one and zero, reverse those two values. And now this is my control map. And if I go here, I can then, I want it to be rougher on the dirt, so I can just add it. So now my roughness on these spots is like uh, 0.5. And then where it's wet, it's almost zero. And then we have all these nice differentiations. So this is now driving the specular roughness with the dirt component. Uh, let's just see uh, what it looks now. And before we finish off the first part here, I just want to switch um, the shader to a scatter shader. So um, let's just move the lights. We I like to move the lights a bit sideways just to see the effect a bit better. And I just want to rotate this by 60 degrees. So it's pretty much side lit, which works already very well. And you can see now it's it's super diffuse everything. So what I want to do now, instead of connecting our color to, um, to the base color, I just want to connect all this stuff to um, the, where is it, subsurface color instead. And let's see what that looks like. And you might think, oh, why is the dust in here? And we, we need to address that f uh, fairly um, soon, just that because the dust is a diffuse component, it's not a scatter component. So our little layer thing, which we did here, we need to actually remove the, the dust. And we can fairly easily do that by just um, disabling the, uh, the, the dirt pass like this. And now it's gone, fairly convenient. But what we wanna do now is um, pluck that dirt component into our specular, uh, sorry, subsurface scattering slot here. So whatever is white in this case will be scattering, but we want to invert that. So um, let me just do another range. I hope that makes sense or it will make sense in a bit. So I'll just invert those values one more time. And then the output of that new range will go into the subsurface slot right there. So as I said, I just invert this here to one and zero. So whatever is black now will be the diffuse component of the shader. So uh, let's see, the diffuse is connected. Oh, we, yeah, let's see. Let's just see how it looks now. So now the one piece should be, let's see if I remove the color, you can see now that whatever is black is my diffuse component, which is just the dirt and the rest is the scatter shader. So he's currently with default settings, super glowy. And I just, thought about this again, we actually don't need to disable this. 
let's just bring back the dirt because it shouldn't change anything really we can just connect both maps to the base color and then because we we have the mask in here which drives the subsurface the shader knows which ones is a dust and which one uh, so which one is diffuse and which one is scattery so this should not be affected by the scatter now which is fairly cool so now let's just fairly quick dial in all the shader values so the specular for skin is around 1.4 i think so it's not super shiny and let's head down to the subsurface scattering part so we want to make sure we are in the random walk v2 which is a bit more advanced uh, algorithm which retains more detail and then the color is kind of a blood color a typical value for skin is one i think 3.5 and 2.4 something like that sometimes it's a bit too orange or too strong but this is a typical measured distance value and now you just need to adjust the scale so Obviously, right now it's way too bloody, way too see-through. So let's just divide this by 10. And this seems to work. I always look at the very thin parts of, of the creature or acid and see how much color it bleeds from it. So point one, it's fairly good. It's pretty much side lit. So we would see some color bleeding, but not too much. And I always say, um, if you can see it, it's too strong. Like this would be way too strong. Let's go back down to point one. I think point one is fairly decent and it doesn't look too strong overall. And then one last thing to note is if you want to go for photorealistic renders, um, there is a little hidden option in the advanced tab to use auto bump and SSS. This is increasing render times or triples render times, but it will retain or keep the detail from the auto bump from the displacement and uses that for the um, subsurface scattering as well. So I always enable that just to get this extra amount of detail. All right, so this is now the first part of this uh, tutorial completed where we pretty much dialed in the skin shader. We will need to rework this a bit later, I guess, maybe add some more occlusion breakup or something like that. Um, but this is currently the first part where we created the head head or body shader and we will in the next uh, part we will be focusing on the eyes and on the teeth and on the mouth area and some metals or something like that so um thank you very much for checking this out and if you like what i do i really appreciate it if you would like my videos and subscribe to my youtube channel it means really a lot to me and yeah so thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next uh, part of this one see ya